Thanks for tuning in for the next episode in the Essential RC Aero Tetris SR71 Blackbird build. I know it's been a while, many distractions could make excuses but I'm not going to, it's just exciting to get back into this big project and it is. I put about 600 pieces of foam together so far to construct the fuselage halves and both of the wings. That took quite a bit of time but what's left to do Basically the main thing that's left to do in terms of the assembly are the engine nacelles, of which there are two, one on each side, sitting more or less on top of the wing, I think. Um, so it's the same deal really, each of the tubes that is the nacelle is uh, made up of cross sections. Each cross section is made up of four individual parts. Uh, so we got uh, a production line going last night, myself and Claire, my lovely partner of uh, nearly 30 years, endured projects like this. Thank you, Claire. And uh, uh, so we got this last part to do. So what we did, we put a production line together. Claire was basically sorting out parts and stacking each, you know, each of the four pieces for each of the cross sections. And I was gluing them together. And I think that's really important that you get two people on the job. If you were just one person doing this, it's going to be painfully, painfully slow to organise the pieces and glue them together. So I hope if you do conceive doing it, that you could do it with at least one other person. If you can get more people involved, even better. The other thing that really makes this a lot quicker is using super glue and kicker. Now, Aero Tetris recommends using PVA, I've said this before, and that does give you a nice, um, a nice uh, glued joint with a bit of flexibility in it, I guess, which is a good thing. Whereas uh, super glue, Sino, uh, is a little bit more fragile, but I don't think that's a big problem because I'm gonna be glassing the whole structure and that will hold it all together. And this is not gonna be a fast, fast jet, it's not. It's gonna be electric ducted fan driven, probably two 120 millimeter fans. It's gonna do maybe 60 to 80, 90 miles an hour at top speed. It's, I've got turbine jets, they do 250 miles an hour, composite jets, you know, Kevlar and carbon and all that to reinforce the structure. But this is not gonna be a fast, fast jet. It's gonna fly at a scale speed though. I think that's the important thing. It's not gonna float around. I think as long as it does that, it'll be good. So, um, cross section. Okay, uh, looks good. Um, so that's one outer shell of the engine nacelle. And then up here, there's an internal part as well, which needs to be glued together. Again, that had uh, cross sections that needed to be uh, put together. And that's what they, the guidance they give is that the backmost section, 21, which I think is on there, I can't see it at the moment. Ah, oh, hold on. <laughs> is that part, you don't put that on until you put this internal, internal structure inside. Okay, so I think a lot of you will be thinking, well, where's the fan gonna go? I don't know at the moment, but all you can do is put this together first, and then I suspect we're gonna have to cut, cut some of it away in, with a very sharp uh, blade, and then create some mounts to put the 120 millimeter EDF fans inside. But we won't worry about that at the moment. I'm just following Aero Tetris instructions and assembling the whole structure. So now that we've got these cross sections together, what I've got to do is actually glue them together. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm using, is it uh, Instacure odorless 12, a gap filling 10 to 25 seconds. I'm not using thin because that would go off really quickly. So you, you do have a small number of seconds, even though I've used kicker to align. Now at the end of the day, 
the, the, you know, it's, even if I was using, they, what Aero Tetris says, to use PVA and to use pins. <laughs> Could you imagine if I'd use pins and PVA to put this thing together? I would have to have about 500,000 pins. And, but I just don't think it matters. You know, the perfect alignment of every edge I just don't think it matters because when it's flying, you're not going to see that. And have you actually seen, you should look up a picture, a close-up picture of the SR-71 itself. It is rough. I mean, it, it does look really, really rough. So I think mine will look more like the SR-71, to be honest. So worth checking the alignment before you actually commit to gluing it together. Make sure you've got it around the wrong way. Imagine if you did that, glued it together. It's like, oh! So uh, a quick check is worth worthwhile. Check three times before you commit to putting it together. Would you believe on the whole of the, what I've put together so far, I have only used, I'm still on just two of these I've not, and I've not used them completely. So I've not actually used a lot of glue. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. If it falls apart on the maiden flight, I know it's a bad thing and I should have used more glue. But um, there you go. A little bit of glue goes a long way, I think. And of course I'm going to go over this and fill in holes and do a little bit of light sanding and, and whatever, but I'm not aiming for perfection, you know, I'm just not. If, I, if, if we get it flying, I'll be happy. If it does one flight, I'll be happy. Right again, quick check. Sure, I'm glad I checked because I might have put that on the wrong way around. <sighs> I wouldn't have been happy. And it is foam. I mean, even if you were to glue it together incorrectly, if you've got some sharp blades, you could prise the parts pieces apart. It's not a disaster. It wouldn't be a disaster. What, what I would say is more problematic is that we found we do have some missing pieces. So one of the cross sections up here, look, I'm missing two parts. Now I said this earlier in the project, the biggest mistake, and please learn from my mistake, is that all of these pieces, all the individual pieces were in a big block of foam. So the, the pieces that you're supposed to use are surrounded by scrap effectively that you can throw away. And there was, I think there were six different layers in the foam. If you do this, do not throw away the scrap because it's very hard to identify sometimes what is a piece, uh, a valuable piece that you need to use and what is scrap, you know? And so if you are missing a piece as I am there, I think I might have inadvertently thrown it away. So what I would be doing now, if I put each of the, the scrap from each of the layers into a bin liner, I would go back to the right layer for the bit, the bin liner and look in it and I'd probably find the piece that I'm missing. Wish I'd done that. But these things happen. I can probably fabricate, um, fabricate it somehow. I hope. It is foam after all. <clears throat> S 
So there we go, about an hour later, and there we have the completed nacelle. A uh, bit of a shame, again, about that missing piece, but with a bit of light uh, ply I can, and the scrap foam, I can form, form that, no, no problem. So you can see in the end there, the slots that the inner piece, the pointy piece, will slide into um, with the front projecting out. The, I guess the, um, the EDF units are going to fit somewhere in here and I'll just, I'll just cut, cut out a section. Um, but uh, fortunately, I've run out of uh, two glues. So two bottles of glue, that's got me to this point. I don't think that's bad. I hope that's not bad. I hope it, it doesn't, I've not put too little glue on, I don't think so. I think I have put on quite quite a bit. So obviously it needs quite a little bit of sanding, a little bit of filling, but we're gonna, I'll do that as, as one job um, after I put everything together. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So thanks for watching this uh, update for the SR71 Blackbird build. Uh, we'll get on to the next one soon. I think on the next one, I'm gonna be covering the assembly of the fins the fins that uh, fit on, actually fit on top here and uh, talking about some of the components that we're going to install inside this airframe as well as covering it with uh, the material that we're going to be covering it with because I'm not going to be epoxy glassing it. I've got a trick up my sleeve proposed by um, Carl who's on my team, Essential RC team. He came up with a better idea, something that potentially be quicker but as strong. So we'll cover that next time. But So thanks again. You might want to subscribe to the Essential RC YouTube channel. What you have to do is click the link to subscribe, but don't forget to uh, click on the bell icon as well so that you get notifications of all our uploads in the future. So thanks for watching this one. See you next time.